the What Are We Doing podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. I'm going to start the episode off like every other YouTuber on the planet. Subscribe to the channel, dude. Hit the red button down there, and right beside that red button's a little bell. And when you click that little bell, it's going to say all notifications, and you click it, you get notifications every time we post, because you never want to miss a post from the What Are We Doing podcast. Why in God's green earth would you want to ever miss a post from the What Are We Doing podcast, okay? I think what you need to do right now is click the subscribe button, click the bell, and you're going to be set up for life. 780 other people have already done it. So that's like a small town. That's like enough people to like, you know, make a difference in like a small minor election maybe. You know what I mean? Like, 800 people's a lot of people. If I had 800 people show up to like my rap concert that I put on, I'd be a little over the top. No one, listen to me, like, hey, no one who listens to this podcast has ever performed for over 800 people. Maybe you have, maybe, maybe a few, maybe one or two, but like all the people that I'm going through in my mind right now, all the names, You've never performed for over 800 people. Listen, if 800 people have already clicked that button, why haven't you? So let's make it like 850, maybe 900, maybe 1,000. Maybe we just keep it 1,000. Why don't we just do 100 plus an extra zero? Let's do that. How's that sound? Click that button and uh, smash that freaking like button, dude. That thumbs up button that's down there. It looks like this. Go like this to it. Okay, take your thumb on that button and go like this. And if you don't, a ninja's gonna come and kick you in the face. Okay, I don't know when, I don't know how, it might be in public, it might be in your house, it might be later, it might be a few months from now, but if you don't hit that like button, a ninja will show up with like a full-blown costume, nunchucks, like a, a throwing star, maybe a few swords, Okay, and then they'll kick you in the face and then they'll leave and they'll disappear, poof, with a thing of smoke. They have those little balls they drop with the smoke in it. And then, poof, they're gone. You'll never know what happened. And then you'll be like, oh, shit, it's because I didn't like that video. Sorry, but that's, it's, it's, it's life. It's how it happens. So, um, also, take notice to the drip, dude, okay? I don't know if you can see it. The light is probably destroying it. Maybe I'll hold it back here. Maybe we can zoom in. I don't know. But I got that Pikachu watch. I got that straight fire. I'll have a picture on the screen. And look, it lights up. I got that straight fire Pikachu watch. It's telling me that it's 149 and it's 310. And it lights up. It tells me the time. Not only does it tell me the date, it tells me the time and it lights up. It's basically an Apple watch. It does like one less thing an Apple Watch does, and it was only $3. You know what I mean? Speaking of the date, that's today, March 10th. If you're like Megs, living under a rock for 38 years, Mario was first released in 1985 in Japan. Mar March 10th is today. It's March 10th, which means it's Mario Day. And if you're truly like Megs, Mario Day, it's because it's March, M-A-R, Mar, March 10th, 1-0, a.k.a. I-0, M-A-R-I-O, Mario. March 10th, Mar-10. I didn't think I had to explain it, but I did last night off camera to, uh, to Megs, so I did. And so I just felt like maybe I had to explain it to you guys as well. Happy Mario Day. Listen, so naturally at some point today, I will be playing Mario 64. And if you missed last week's episode, episode 80, first of all, go check it out. Should be linked somewhere in the vicinity of this channel, of this video. Wherever you're watching this, I'm sure you can easily access episode 80. Go check that out in its entirety where uh, Paul and I, we break down pretty much... Um, Pretty much the uh, the Nintendo 64 being the greatest console ever. And um, uh, we also announced that we now have, listen, we have a new Twitch channel. The podcast 
has a Twitch channel because we also like playing games. We like making podcasts and we like playing games because it's also pretty much a podcast. If you listen to the to the Twitch streams, I mean, it's basically just me talking anyways. I mean, I'm talking about the game half the time, but the other half the time, Jeff and I are talking about like aliens touching down in Los Angeles. We're talking about like our favorite stuff. We're asking each other questions. Like there's other conversations happening than just like, oh shoot, my Geodude just died. But like also that's happening. So it's also entertaining. Like you know what I mean? It's a different kind of podcast uh, format and we're testing it out, dude. We've done it five times. We put in over eight hours on Twitch so far alone, like last week, insane. Uh, our average streams are like 90 minutes, so it's pretty crazy. Um, and then, so we're also uploading uh, those streams to YouTube, of course, uh, after the fact. Um, so both links to those channels will be in the description. It's twitch.tv backslash wadpod, uh, all one word. And the YouTube uh, can be found at youtube.com backslash at wad underscore games. Confusing, I know, but it's fine. Both links are down in the description. In the description, in my British description down below, in me knickers down below, you'll find the link to our Twitch channel and the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash at symbol ward underscore games, W-A-W-D underscore G-A-M-E-S. Um, like I said, both links are down in the description. I mean, we're just having fun, man, dude. We're just having fun on Twitch. We're having so much freaking fun. If you can make a Twitch channel, start streaming. Some kid on Twitter today tried to punk me and say like, oh, you're not going to be successful. You can't be a millionaire. You can't be a billionaire if you play video games. So like, what are your goals in life if you're playing video games? And I said, hey, bro, I was streaming Pokemon like all last week. And I'm pretty sure we did like 10, maybe 12 grand. So... I'm not sure what level you're on, but I'm on the level where my businesses and everything else and my processes and the people who help me and my partners and employees and other people and services and automation is in place to the point where I can go on Twitch, homie. I can get on Twitch and play Pokemon for an hour and a half if I want to. Once a week, twice a week, maybe I did it three times last week, whatever because I have systems in place that take care of my businesses for me, that while I'm playing Pokemon and capturing, capturing my Jolteon, my Wiggly Tough, my Hypno that's on the team, okay? While I'm doing that, clients are paying their invoices. You know what I'm saying? So listen, you can play video games, start a freaking Twitch channel, bottom line. We're having fun, dude. My friends Jeff and Paul are in the chat with me. Um, our third day we got raided. Uh, so now we have more friends. I'm trying to make even more friends on Twitch. I followed a few more people this week. Shout out if I followed you. Um, you know what I mean? And so, and also do we're playing Pokemon. Okay, it's back. It's back in my life. It happens. Every like, you know, nine to 12 to 18 months, I become re obsessed with Pokemon and now it's on all of my devices. I'm streaming it on Twitch and I now have a Nintendo DS emulator uh, installed on my iPhone and my iPad. No jailbreak, by the way. It's really easy. Listen, here's how you do it open Safari, go to Google, search DS player, click on the first result. It's on the screen. I'm putting whatever on the screen. Click on the first result, save it to your home page, like go to the, the share, hit the share button, hit add to home page. It'll become an icon. Then you need to go back to Safari, find a ROM, right? And it's a DS player. So you'll need like soul silver or like heart gold, or I don't know. It might play game boy advance games. I don't know. I didn't test that. I downloaded heart gold and soul silver and it worked perfectly fine. So I got those ROMs, downloaded those. They go to your downloads on your files app. If you have an up-to-date iPhone or iPad, you have a files app. 
So then you open the DS player because the icon's now on your home screen. There should be a button you click that says add a ROM, add a game. It'll open the, uh, the files app, navigate to your downloads. The downloaded ROM is probably a zip. So you'll need to open that up and it'll open up the NES file or the NDS file, sorry. And then it should open the game and you'll be playing it like me. Like I'm playing it. I'm playing it right now. I'm playing it right now and I've got my file open and boom, here we go. I mean, oh shoot. Oh wow, there is volume, look at me. All right, here we go, I'm playing it right now. You know what I mean? Like what are we talking about? I've got a Nintendo DS emulator on my freaking iPhone, dude. Hey, follow the instructions and we're on our way to catching them all. You know what I mean? <laughs> My phone is a uh, hooked up to the uh, roadcaster. So we're having a blast, dude. And so what we're talking about today is the fact that women who we support, love, and cherish on this podcast, by the way. Uh, which is why we're not talking about those other things because we love and support and cherish the women uh, that that listen to this podcast and support this podcast and let us do this podcast and basically Max and so um, you know what I mean. So we love women on this podcast and so that's why we're exposing this scam. And ladies, listen. Unfortunately, um, we're talking about the salons. Okay. And listen, I know the last thing you need to do is take advice from a guy whose voice sounds like this, but these salons are ripping you off hand over foot. Okay. And it's unfortunate it's coming from your own kind, but ladies, the salons. Okay. I'm talking about like, I'm talking about like a real salon. Okay. Now listen, if you're a great clips kind of bitch, I need you to move along. Okay. If you're getting your hair cut as a woman at a great clips, whether like it's a standalone or inside a Walmart, wherever it is, you've given up on your head, let alone your fashion sense years ago. Okay. Uh, so if you go to great clips to get your hair cut, this isn't for you. Okay. I'm talking about the women who go to like vivid or Jenny's or indulge or honey hair studio or like something equivalent to a high end salon where most women in like, you know, from like 26 to like 40, you know, go to get their hair done. Right. And, um, so, you know, we're talking about the $150 haircuts. Ladies get out of there, maybe a hundred, but no, you know what I mean? A hundred to $150 for a haircut. And what are we talking for color? Hey, what are we talking for a cut and color? We're talking 300, 350. Yeah. Meg's once spent like 300 to $350 in like six hours of her time for color treatment in a salon and hated it. Meg's isn't the first girl to hate her hair after paying hundreds of dollars to the salon. Okay. It's unfortunate because it happens quite often. Here's the mentality behind it. You're at the salon. They've already quoted you your price. You're having a good time. She's scrubbing your hair. She's putting the color in. You're talking. Adam Levine just texted some chick. Now he's in a cheating scandal. You're gossiping. You're getting the tea. You're doing your thing. You're out with the girls. You have a mimosa, maybe a little wine, you know, whatever the salon offers. And like you're having the salon mentality of a great time. You're not thinking this might be the worst thing ever because there's no way I'm having this great time right now at the salon. And I'm also paying hundreds of dollars for this to be a bad thing. And so you're in the mentality of it, right? No worries. It's getting done. It looks all right. It's still wet. You're still in salon mode. You look in the mirror and you see it and it's okay. You're looking at it and you pay. You said, thank you. Oh my gosh. I had a great time. Thank you guys so much for your time. It's been all day. It looks great. And then you smile and then you get in the car 
And then the car does something, the car does something magical. And here's what it is. The car does something magical. The car not only gets you home, but the car tells you the truth. Because as soon as you get in the car, you look in the car mirror, whether it's the rear view mirror, your flip down mirror, whatever mirror is in your car that you trust the most, you're going to go look in it. And the mirror in your car doesn't lie to you because you rely on that mirror. Every time you get to an event, a wedding, a job interview, um, a hot date, uh, you know, stepping out, you look at yourself, the club, a birthday party, whenever you put your eyelashes on and your thing in your eyes and you use the crimpers and the eyeshadow and the blush and the little sponge ball and you cover up all the blemishes on your face with a thing that matches your skin tone. And once you do all that, if you do all that, you're relying on the car mirror to tell you the truth as soon as you get to where you need to be. The salon mirror lies to you. The car mirror does not. And so, and so it's unfortunate. And look, listen, 80% of the time, 80% of the time you ladies go to the salon, you're perfectly happy with your $300 color, the $150 cut. But for chicks who are tired of it, listen up. Now, unfortunately, men have this place that we go to called Sports Clips. Now, the name, listen, don't let the name fool you, okay? Don't let the name fool you. I don't give a crap about sports. I don't know anything about sports. I know a little bit. I know a little bit about football. I know a little bit about football. I know nothing about basketball, baseball, hockey, or literally any other sport. I know a little bit about football, that's it. And 99% of the time, football's not on when you go to sports clips. So it's you know, just the analyst or whatever, it's fun. You don't have to like sports to go. They call it sports clips just to keep the regular ladies out, okay? And if the secret gets out, I mean, I'm obviously, you know, uh, uh, there'll be hell to pay. So I'm obviously going to, uh, you know, I'm going to take the consequences. I'm willing to risk my life to let you in on these secrets. Okay. There is sports on 24 seven at sports clips, but it doesn't matter. That's besides the point. Here's what's included at sports clips. When you go as a man to get your hair done at the salon. And this is, this is 100% true because I just went, right? I just went. I just went the other day and Meg's went with me. She'll testify 100%. You know what I mean? First of all, you get your hair cut, obviously. Any way you want it, you want it all. You want a little bit. You want halfway. You want something new. You want something old. However you need your hair cut, you get it done. I myself am a one to two fade on the sides, maybe half on the top. Sometimes she does the thing down the middle. Sometimes I don't. Doesn't matter to me. Sometimes I swoosh it. Sometimes I don't. It looks good. And then it's an upcharge, but it's completely worth it. 100% worth it. You get a beard trim. Okay. You need the beard to match what's going on up top. And Lord knows you can't do it at home by yourself because every time you try to do it, you end up just shaving your whole face off and your girl's pissed anyways. So let the professionals of sports clips handle the beard as well, because you might as well. It's a little bit, just take the extra time and they take the extra time and it looks great. And your girl will be even more impressed or your man, whoever, you know what I mean? And so after you get the haircut and the beard trim, that's your first 20, maybe 30 minutes, depending on the cut. Uh, you get your neck done, right? They'll shape that shit up in the back, okay? Once you're done the cut, you get taken back to the shampoo room. Ladies, secret number two. Secret number one, sports don't matter. Secret number two, that's just to keep you out. Secret number two, the shampoo room, not just for shampooing, Okay. Not only do we get the shampoo and the hot water, we get the option, uh, first of all, the chair vibrating, massaging chair while we're sitting there getting our hair washed. Our feet are propped up. 
I get the option of a hot or cold towel. 99.9% of men get the hot towel. I'm like the only person ever to get the cold towel. I like the cold towel. It feels better on my face. I don't know. Next time you're at sports clips, ask for the cold towel. Viral tip. Okay. Clip that up and put it on TikTok. Um, I get the cold towel. Hot take. Get the cold towel, not the hot towel. That's a hot take. Then not only do they massage your face with the towel on it that's got like lavender, maybe a little lotion in it. So like you're getting a little facial there too. They give you a scalp massage for about a minute and then they shampoo it and then they wash it out and then they wipe it away with that towel. And it's like this whole facial head scalp experience. The chair's vibrating and we just got shampoo and conditioner with this like lemon, lavender, like bomb ass shit that we're never going to put in our hair again. So not only does it smell great, we look great. Once the wash is done, and that first massage is done, we head back to the chair. And now we get our hair dried off with the hair dryer. Nice touch. And they put a towel over my shoulders and they hit it with the massage gun. They hit each side, they hit each shoulder, they hit the middle, they hit the back. We go back around each shoulder. And I mean, I get a solid three to four minute massage gun massage while my hair's drying. And then they ask, do I want any product in it? And of course she puts this like beard oil hair product, smells great, semi styles it, $20 in container, should have bought it, didn't, but I'm definitely going back to do it. With the beard trim on top of that, let's recap. Haircut, beard trim, facial massage, cold towel, scalp massage, shampoo, conditioner, chair massage, go back, shoulder massage, hair dryer, styled, beard oil, all that, 30 bones, $30. It cost me $30 to have all that done. It's like an hour, maybe an hour and a half of their time, $30. Because I'm a gentleman, I tip the bill, I'm out of there with 60, you can be out of there maybe 40, you can be out of there 50. For 50 bucks, a man's spa day to get their hair cut, beard trim, face scrub, wash, fucking massage left and right, scalp massage, shoulder massage, the chair's massaging you. You get like three different massages. You get your freaking hair washed. You get it cut. You get your beard trim for $30. And women are paying 10 times as much for some color that washes out three weeks later that they didn't like in the first place. And there's not much, I mean, if they have the balls, Meg's had the balls, she got her money back. If you have the balls, call the salon and get your money back if you don't like it, but most women won't. I mean, ladies, am I wrong? If I'm wrong, roast me to death in the comments. But honestly, I mean, that's what I've experienced. I don't know, that's what I'm saying. So ladies, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe it's time we infiltrate the sports clips. Maybe it's time we let the secret out and women, let's gear up and start going to sports clips. Get your hair washed, get a massage, get a, a little facial with a, a hot or cold towel, get your scalp massage, get your hair cut, get some product in it, get it styled for $30. Why not? Let's have equality in men and women's haircuts and services. You know what I mean? I'm all for it. Women's rights, 100%. Listen, if you're a high-end salon, cut your prices by 50%. You know what I mean? Get ready to rock because it looks like Avril Lavigne has moved on from her broken engagement with none other than her longtime friend, Tyga. The duo was spotted at Paris Fashion Week party where Tyga was seen putting his arm around Avril Lavigne's neck and planting a smooch on her cheek. The two even held hands 
As they made their way through the event earlier in the day, the duo was seen whispering sweet nothings to each other uh, at the um, Auto, Auto Linger show. Rumors of the romance first started back in February when they were spotted having dinner together with a group of friends. At that time, sources claimed they were just good friends, but it seems things have heated up since then. It's a good thing Avril's not singing complicated anymore because this love triangle with Tyga is nothing, is anything but, anything but. Avril recently called off her engagement with music uh, musician Maud's son. Damn. I wonder how he's doing. You think Maud's son's okay? I heard he's not doing good after this news, but I hope, listen, he's gonna be Okay. I mean, better couple there, first of all. Better couple? Avril Lavigne and Maud's son versus Avril Lavigne and Tyga? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Argue me in the comment. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it seems like she wasted no time getting back in the game. The couple had been together for 10 months, but their relationship was reportedly on and off for the last two months. While the reason behind her split remains a mystery, insiders say... Uh, there was no cheating involved. Uh, that's good news for Maud's son, who was apparently blindsided by the breakup. He, his representatives told us um, that they were engaged just three days prior to the split, and he had no idea anything had changed. Um, it's been a whirlwind year for Avril Lavigne and Maud's son, who first met in January 2021, got engaged during a trip to Paris in March of 2022. Maud's son even dedicated a song to his bride-to-be, calling her a princess and pushing about how he, uh, how she makes him a better person. Uh, looks like Tyga is ready to be Avril's knight in shining armor now. Uh, well... Let's hope he's ready to take on the punk rock princess and all the drama that comes with her. So, okay, well, that was one of our original articles. That was fun. Um, so Paris Fashion Week happened and Tyga uh, and now his girlfriend, Am Levine, they were caught making out. Um, and listen, I thought, I thought this chick was dead. I thought Avril Lavigne died like years ago and they replaced her with a clone or something. There was a whole conspiracy. There's like a documentary on it. Is that not a thing? Can we look that up here, right here? The theory claims uh, Avril Lavigne struggling with fame at the beginning of her career began using a body double named Melissa at some point. The real Levine is said to have died, so the record company replaced her with Melissa full-time. Proof has included Levine's red carpet shots, wearing uh, trousers. Uh, Melissa prefers uh, dresses and skirts. Of course, listen, hey, listen, Avril Levine like wearing pants. Melissa likes wearing skirts and dresses. So obviously when that shift happened, it must be, it must be a body double. You know what I mean? And uh, differences between facial features pre-2003 and uh, what she looks like now. And um, uh, there's also been clues left uh, in uh, songs such as Slipped Away um, and other things, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I mean, listen, make your own decision. Uh, I think, I don't know. I'm not sure. I have to look into it a little further, whether I think she's still alive or not. But this chick kind of looks like Avril Lavigne, so I'm going to go with it. Make your own decision. But Tyga seems to be dating uh, what he thinks is Avril Lavigne. Anyways, the couple was spotted at Paris Fashion Week wearing matching outfits. Uh, you can see how adorable they are here. I think I have a video. Yep. Here's them at uh, Paris Fashion Week. First of all, their outfits are amazing. Second of all, the guy on the end, <laughs> the guy on the end, is he wearing a bed? Wait a minute. Okay. No one, let's actually, who actually gives a shit about Tyga and Avril Lavigne? The guy on the bed wearing the bed, 
He's sending me to places I've never been. His commitment. He's sleeping. He has a face mask on. He's snoozing. I mean, the guy on the bed, he's, his commitment to the bit is something I've never seen before. I mean, besides the stuff I've done, it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. The guy on the bed. Play the guy on the bed again. I mean, what is this? So, listen, the story gets a little weird now. Okay, the story gets a little weird. So I posted this. If you follow us on Facebook or Instagram, if you don't, definitely do. You can go to wadpod.com, W-A-W-D-P-O-D.com, backslash Facebook, backslash Instagram. Those are two separate things, so you got to do it twice. Wadpod.com, backslash Facebook, wadpod.com, backslash Instagram for the moms listening. Um, do that twice. Follow us on both and you would have seen, I posted this story. We posted our, we posted our post with the image and the hashtags. And if you go to our Facebook page, wadpod.com backslash Facebook, you'll see that someone commented on the post, um, on the post for Avril Lavigne and, and Tiger dating. And so what he basically said was, let me just pull this up. Let me just pull this up, wadpod.com backslash Facebook. Let me just pull this up so I don't, I don't, I don't want to misspeak here. Um, here's Avril Levine. He said, because we, 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 we broke this story about Avril Levine and Tyga dating on uh, the seventh, about three days ago. And so Richard Dill, uh, my man, Dick Dill, uh, he commented on our post and said, it's all fake. He said, it's all fake. Avril and I, I just took a screenshot of it so I don't forget it for later. Avril and I have known each other for well over 20 years. And so I said, wild. Could have sworn she passed away years ago. You know, just bringing up the conspiracy, try to stir up some more information. And he said, no. That's just a garbage rumor. So there we go. There you have it. There's your answer. The Avril Lavigne passing away, replaced with a, you know, a, a studio replaced lookalike is just a conspiracy. And it's not true. And uh, Dick Dill just uh, wrapped it up right here. He said, it's a garbage rumor. She's my wife. We stay in very close contact at all times. It's the real husband of Avril Lavigne. So this Tyga dating thing must be a cover for her marriage to Dick Dill. He then continues to say, Avril and I started dating as teenagers in Napini, which I guess is a town somewhere, probably a very small, probably a very small town of like 300 people. My wife has been faking public relationships for many years to keep fans out of our private life. We have, we have been seen together all over the world for work and vacation. We have had problems with fans in public before. My wife is using the fake public relationships for revenge on some nosy fans, fan pages that pissed her off. Okay. So there's some fan pages that pissed off Avril Lavigne. So in order to get back at these fan pages, Avril Lavigne is faking a relationship with young money rapper Tyga in order pre to preserve her secret marriage with Dick Dill. And so the next question is, who's Dick Dill? So we clicked on his name, which is all you need to do. And we clicked on his name and... Um, I mean, boy, he's a doozy. He's a guy who literally every day will post a message somewhat that along the lines of I'm reading one from, um, I'm reading one from six hours ago. I'm reading today's message to his wife. Good morning, my wonderful wife. I hope you have a beautiful start to your day. I love you, Avril Lavigne Dill. And she's tagged here. Here she is with 50 million followers. She's tagged every morning, every day, consistently. The man is delusional. And so we have some words from him. 
um, to uh, hear some words uh, from from uh, Dick Dill. Uh, for everyone who does not believe, we found this video. Um, and I mean, this just puts it to bed. I don't know what Taiga thinks he's doing, uh, but I'm sure I'm sure Dill's going to have some words. And I've been married to Avril for a while now. This woman makes me happier than you could ever imagine. I love her with my entire heart. I would do anything for her, and I told her a long time ago I wanted the world to know how much I love her. And I still mean that with everything inside of me. I love you, Avril Dill. Just to give you a little catch up, I've been making music for some of y'all's favorite artists for more than 20 but, years. But, and I ain't but, to claim any of the songs that I wrote. Producer, name them. That's not what's important to me. What's important to me is my wife. Oh. I love her. I All miss right. her. She's special and beautiful inside and out. And I'm with you forever and always, my beautiful ballerina. I love you, Avril Dill. I hope you have a wonderful day, my love. And I'll be back with you here in a little while, baby. Listen. 262 people have watched this video. Uh, minus us, I obviously. So we'll say conservatively 250. Statistically, Avril Lavigne probably have, has seen this video. Statistically, as 250 views, statistically... With that many people on the planet, it's a good chance Avril Lavigne has actually seen this video. And this man clearly is a stalker, and I'm so sorry that we had to stumble upon him, but he commented on our Facebook post, because Facebook is just a strange place these days. And what the hell? Avril Lavigne's trying to, he's, they're trying to infiltrate the podcast with a music video. Now they're on to us. They're on to us now. They're on to us. Listen, he posts every morning to his fake wife, Avril Lavigne, and I, you know, I don't know, I I support it, kind of, not really, I'm kind of scared for Avril Lavigne, I mean, she's got Tiger now, he should be able to protect her in case this guy shows up, but I mean, hey man, good luck, you know? I mean, he's been he's been posting for five years. There's comments on these posts from people, I guess, who've been following him now, just to see when he's gonna give up. And like, do, the dude's been posting for five years as Avril Lavigne's husband. It's very strange. It's very strange. But the internet's a strange place. Hey, guy, what are we doing? Listen, I have a new, I have a new favorite thing. I have a new favorite thing on this planet and it's going to be your new favorite thing too. I guarantee it. Listen, I love doing this and I need more of it because I only have like this two minutes of it. Okay. I, this is my new favorite. This is my new favorite thing to do ever. Watching Snoop Dogg play the Wheel of Fortune. I need, listen, the Wheel of Fortune has been on for how many seasons? How many seasons? Wheel of Fortune. Since 1975, 40 seasons. Listen, you guys are almost done. You're about to be dust, okay? They're about to cancel the Wheel of Fortune. If you want to keep the Wheel of Fortune for another 50 seasons. If you want to continue watching Wheel of Fortune, you need to have Snoop Dogg as a contestant every week. Every time the show is on, Snoop Dogg needs to be a contestant. You need to give Snoop Dogg 80% of the Wheel of Fortune. Connecting. Oh. I love it. I love it when people interrupt my bits. You need to give Snoop Dogg 80% of the Wheel of Fortune, because let's face it, you don't have much fortune left. Give him 80% so it's worth his time and have him on for an entire season. Give Snoop Dogg an entire season of the Wheel of Fortune, and I guarantee you, you become the number one show and you beat The Price is Right in rankings. If you do a whole season with Snoop Dogg, you beat The Price is Right in rankings 100%. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Drew Carey cannot compete with Snoop Dog playing the Wheel of Fortune. Take a look.
First of all, the category name, what are you doing? Snoop. Okay. So here's the letters. Here's the letters. Let's, let's listen to what Snoop maybe potentially thinks the puzzle is. Baking onions. Baking onions. Baking onions. Bake, baking onions. So, yep. Everybody else is in it now, Amanda. Baking brownies. Yes. Oh my God! Yay. And of course, yeah. Martha is going to be disappointed. Oh, Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. Yo, Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart. Best thing to happen. Best thing to happen to our society. Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart. Best thing to happen. Martha's going to be upset. <laughs> That's your whole thing. <laughs> oh, 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 Snoop got it again. Snoop got it again. Here we go. Let's see. What, what do we think? What do we think? That's Snoop. Toilet Atlas. <laughs> Toilet Atlas. Toilet, can we go, who is that? The category is a person. Toilet Atlas. Not a person at all. Okay. Not a person that ever existed. I have no idea, but Mark, talented artist. Yeah. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. Come on, buddy. I love it. Can we give the money to Snoop anyway? Yeah, please. Oh, again, the category? Hey, what are you doing? Snoop got it, okay, all right. He's gonna get this one. What are you doing? Sweetening the pot. Let's see. Snoop. S swallowing the, the knot. Swallowing the knot. That's it. That's got to be it. Else now, Amanda. Sweetening the pot. Yeah, there you go. I was right the first time. All right. Last one. No. Occupation. 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 What could it be? What could it be? What could it be? What could it be? Oh, nope. what's he got? I mean, teacher, uh, uh, acting, acting teacher. Airport teacher. No. Nope. Airport teacher. No, that's that's not right. Amanda. Acting teacher. Airport teacher. Hey, it should have been airport teacher. Snoop. Snoop's right. Snoop should always be right too. Oh, every time Snoop guesses, Snoop needs to be right. 100% of the time. Come on, Snoop. I don't know, can spin again? or Come on, Snoop. I'd like to solve the puzzle. Come on, Snoop. Go ahead. Uh, sun's out, bun's out. <laughs> there we go. We got a puzzle. He got it. I mean, you know what I mean? If at first you don't succeed, try again. Snoop Dogg's got his own cereal. He's in the oh, metaverse. In the blank, and the now freaking Steve Harvey's trying to come on the podcast. You know what I mean? It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, and now, you know, the Wheel of Fortune. I think Snoop Dogg needs his own season of the Wheel of Fortune. Well, we finally did it. We finally did it. Um, we finally have come up with a way. We finally have canceled Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast will finally be canceled after this, and thank goodness we finally got him, okay? Listen to what this jerkwad did. He went down to Africa, I'm pretty sure was the country, and he, let me just, let me just pull it up, this freaking nonsense. Mr. Beast philanthropy is what he calls it, you know. 
And uh, let's go to his videos here. Here we go. School supplies. Blah, blah. I mean, it's just insane what he's doing. And so what happened is he spent all this money. And of course, he filmed the whole thing. He spent all this money uh, and, and gave all these uh, children shoes. It was this uh, charity that he linked up with. They take like products or whatever, and they make them into liquid and goo, and then they mash them together, and then they make shoes. And so he paid for a bunch of those shoes, and they gave them to like 100,000 or 10,000 or however many kids. And so now these kids uh, can walk to school and get an education. And so not only did he give them shoes, he gave them education, and I'm assuming Teslas and other things. So it's kind of crazy. Now he's coming. <laughs> they're coming after him on Twitter again which is hilarious by the way i'm joking at the fact that we have finally canceled him i'm on team beast okay let's not let's not you know get that confused here but to cancel mr beast for filming a charitable act i say what are you doing how many pairs of shoes mr twitter fingers have you purchased for the children how many i'll wait because mr beast purchased a bunch and not only that he schooled you he schooled you left and right, okay? He's got the freaking receipts to show it. He put millions of his own dollars into Beast Philanthropy. Every penny he makes goes back into the charity. Everything they do is for charity. The whole damn thing's a charity. He has food banks. The money they make from the YouTube video that they have to film goes directly back into it to pay for even more stuff. So Mr. Twitter Fingers, what do you have to say next? So he replied, Twitter fingers replied, right? So he comes back after Mr. Beast let him know, like, hey, bro, like, this is my money. I'm putting my money into it. I don't make money. Like, it's a th like this is just what I do. It's my business. It's how I, it's how I operate. It's what he does because he's a nice guy. And yeah, there should be a political figure that comes along and does this for us. But right now, unfortunately, we have to rely on nice guy Jimmy, Mr. Beast. Sorry. That's just the current state of the world. So... So Mr. Beast goes, he gives all the kids the shoes. And now, you know, someone on Twitter's like, hey, F you for doing this. Like, you're just a slimy skis ball. Like they always do every time he does something good. And then he says, I don't make a dollar. And they say, oh, that's rich. Coming from the guy who owns like a fast food Mr. Beast burger restaurant chain. And so then they're coming swinging. Mr. Beast ducks, they miss, and he comes in with the freaking uppercut. I don't know how fighting works, but I'm pretty sure that's a thing. And slam dunks it again with, I don't make a penny from Beast Burger. I made Beast Burger to help the local restaurants through COVID, much like the Barstool Fund, much like the government should have done, much like Mr. Beast did with Beast Burger to help the restaurants make more profit. Because the fans will order Beast Burger, but we're not ordering Friendlies. We're not going to order a cheeseburger from Friendlies for dinner, but we're going to order Beast Burger. So the restaurants get more revenue. Slam dunk, five star out of five. Another hit to the jaw for Mr. Beast. You can't cancel the man. Stop doing it and just support the cause. If he tells you to donate a dollar, you donate a dollar. If he tells you to buy a t-shirt because it benefits charity or does something for kids, you buy the damn t-shirt. Knock it off. The whole trying to cancel Mr. Beast. The whole, he's, why, is, why can't he just do it and not film it? Because that generates more revenue and clout and more eyes are on it and more awareness goes to the cause. Genius. Less than your tweet did. You can't cancel Mr. Beast. We're not going to cancel Mr. Beast. Stop trying to cancel Mr. Beast. It's silly. You're not going to cancel Mr. Beast. Stop it. Stop. Hey, psst. hey, stop being silly. Stop playing these silly ghost games. Stop being silly and button up. Straighten up and knock it off. Stop being silly. My name is Levi McCurdy. This has been another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry that Justin Bieber could not make it this week. I could not secure a guest. No one was answering my phone calls. I think my phone might be broken. I'm so sorry. But maybe next episode, I'll give you an update. We'll see. They haven't emailed us back yet. Thank you guys so much for listening to episode 80. Check out all of our links, wadpod.com backslash links. Everything you need is there. 
or the do better network.com. We're building more content as we speak more content coming soon. Shout out to uh, Dick Dill, the stalker of Avril Lavigne. Please stop and get some help. You're not married to her. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Levi McCurdy. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. I need 1,000 subscribers for my 31st birthday. I just got over COVID for a second time in my life, and I need your guys' help. If you don't get me 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, I'm probably going to get COVID again, and it's going to be really bad this time. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you don't want me to get COVID for a third time. Subscribe, hit the bell, do the damn thing. Let's rock it. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you made it thus far, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Join our Patreon, patreon.com backslash. What are we doing? As soon as we get something rolling over there, we're going to make it happen. And, uh, thank you guys so much for supporting us. Wadpod.com backslash links is everything you need. YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, good pods, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, Facebook reels, Facebook posts, the Instagram post, like them, share them. It's free. Support a friend. Hey, if your friend's streaming a video game on Facebook, share it. If your friend's posting something on Facebook, share it. If your other friend's doing something like that, give it a like. Give it a thumbs up. How freaking hard is it to like a Facebook post? I know you see it. I get the notifications. You come to the channel, but you don't like the post. It's free. Support your friends. They support you. Support them back. Give it a share. Give it a like. Thank you so much. This has been episode 81. My name is Levi McCurdy of the What Are We Doing podcast. Thank you guys. Peace out, everybody. This is the What Are We Doing podcast.